Okay, people. So, um, I didn't do a full update, but just to get a little background, I got a code P1757, if I'm correct. Um, it's for my 2008 Infiniti FX35, and I think this applies to the G35 as well. Um, from 2003 to 2007, if I'm correct. Don't quote me on that. But uh, mine specifically is the uh, 2008 FX35 automatic um, rear-wheel drive. Um, the other day, um, I pulled this code, and it just says front brake uh, solenoid. So it's either that it was a solenoid or a common problem that is happening. And this is just to confirm. Um, I didn't do a video on taking this. Uh, this is my transmission. Um, it's the TCM, the transmission control module. Um, it wasn't too bad to remove the valve body from um, from uh, from the transmission itself. Um, as long as you had basic tools for the most part, a few harnesses to unclip. And, um, and then the backing plate that sits over the top of this that you do have to kind of snap apart. Um, it does sound brittle as you're breaking it apart, so um, don't worry about that, but I do apologize for not doing the full video. There is a full video out there of a guy. It's a Hispanic uh, repairman. Um, I know he has some kind of snap-on diagnostic uh, tool. The video is like uh, 35 minutes, 34, 35 minutes, but he does a full breakdown, full teardown, um, removing the valve body from the transmission to getting to where I'm at now. And this is where I'm basing my video on because I had the same problem. Um, and this was just to confirm that actual problem. Um, as you can uh, see, let me flip this around. So you have all your pins here. Um, I believe this is the one that um, for the brake solenoid um, that was pulling the code. But just so you can see, the confirmation so these tabs they all connect to sorry they all connect to the solenoid um, this middle one here is the brake solenoid the one that called for um, for the code that got pulled and if you notice if I can get this right so they're all the tabs are supposed to be connected so Let's see if I can get the right angle. Sorry. So you notice here on this one, you see how it separates right there. I'll do it again. How it separates. So that's pretty much what's happening um, as I'm driving my vehicle. Again, there you can see it separating. Um, that is pretty much what's happening as I'm driving the vehicle at some point it's snapped or whatever it is I guess it's a common problem so it kind of disconnects and the circuit I mean and the, the the power going through is not going through the circuit correctly as you're driving along um, once the code is in the system it's in the system um, with the transmission it uh, it would not shift um, for me, it just stayed like in one gear. So I was only able to drive like maybe 40, 45 miles an hour till I, um, till I was able to get it where I could uh, park it and get it worked on. But um, I did trust that video to assume that that was my problem. And sure enough, it was. I guess uh, the metal is so thin here that it, that it goes on and snaps. I mean, it's always that specific one for whatever reason. I'm not sure what it is. Um, maybe just a bad design flaw. I'm not, I'm just not sure. But um, in the video, he just puts the solder wire around there and he just um, solders it really good to where it reconnects. So I guess that is the fix. This job I quoted was anywhere between $750 and $2,000. And the $2,000 mark, I'm assuming that was completely replacing the valve body and the TCM. And that also has to be programmed. The transmission control module here, it's got to be programmed. So that was my biggest problem trying to take this thing to infinity or possibly a transmission specialist to have this thing programmed. I don't know how much that would have cost, but just the parts alone is, is already expensive. So uh, anywhere between $750 and $2,000 is now costing me just my time and uh, $15 soldering iron and a uh, some solder. So um, that uh, seems to be it. I don't think there's anything wrong with the solenoids, uh, which is seven there. 
that uh that plug into place then one two three four five six and seven on the back side um like i said i do apologize for not doing the full video but like i said there is another guy out there that did a full video on this um specific uh issue but like i said this was just to confirm that uh that it did uh work for me at least at this point that's what i'm assuming is the problem so i'm crossing my fingers that uh that this does work once i get it all put back inside um but i'm gonna make sure this is soldered up really good because i'd hate to solder it and then it snap again and i've already filled the transmission with fluid again because transmission fluid is not cheap and then only to have to drain it and take it all, all back apart just to re-solder it up so i'm going to make sure this is soldered really well which it should work and um and we will go from there but uh, i won't uh take too much more of you guys' time this was just more like i said a confirmation 2008 infinity fx 35 the tcm um brake front brake solenoid which is the one that sits right in the middle here on the other side um so i can assume those solenoids would go bad i want to just change them but from seeing this snap here i think that's what's going to be my problem and i'll risk it just going on and just soldering that and putting it back together um if i have a continuing uh pull of a uh, of a uh, code uh, a check engine light code then i'll just kind of take it from there but i think it would be common sense at that point to know that it would just be the solenoids and i'll just have to eat the cost on doing the transmission fluid again but i'm just going to start off here just assuming that i don't want to buy new solenoids if they're all good but just probably be a good thing to change them uh, while you have it out because it is a little bit of work but it doesn't take a genius or anything like that so i will leave the video at that and um Hopefully I'll come back and uh, and possibly add to this video or make another one, an update video, just to show that it uh, was it and it did work. Alrighty, peace, guys. Okay, guys. So this is an update um, to my video as I was repairing my uh, TCM. Um, so far, so good. Um, everything seems to be working out. It seems to be shifting fine now. Um, so I think it was just a solder issue. Uh, just with the circuit not connecting being that it was broke like I said, it seems to be a common problem um, So you just have to solder it really good It's probably it's best that I did and what the guy did um, on the video that I seen do it is he wrapped a solder wire around the circuit where it's broke so once it starts to all melt it melts all the way around if you try to just solder it right on the top corner or edge of it it won't solder all the way through and it can possibly break again so um doing it the way that he did it where you just wrap a piece of solder around it as best as you can it's a little tricky because it's a really small piece of solder that you have to try to wrap around it but uh once the solder touches it and melts i mean and starts to solder it then um then it kind of all blends together or whatever it is so so far, so good. Uh, of course, I had to refill my transmission um, and uh, get the levels back high. There was a little slippage at the beginning because I was unsure how many quarts of transmission fluid and I didn't want to overfill it. So, of course, I had to put a little bit of transmission fluid and then go drive it. But I realized it was really low when I was trying to drive it the first time around. So I had some slippage going on. Um, so it kind of scared me a little bit, but once I stopped and checked the fluid level after driving it around the block, that's when I realized that um, that my fluid level was uh, was way too low. That's when it didn't even register on the dipstick. So that kind of calmed me down because I know the transmission needs fluid in order for it to work. So as I drove and filled and drove and filled and added a little more i didn't want to overfill it so you have to drive it around for the fluid level to kind of really drop and get correct and so the dipstick can kind of reddish register as the fluid's getting warm it registers more proper or more exact after you've driven it around and let the fluid settle where it needs to settle and uh then when it starts registering then that's when you can add little by little by little like i said i just didn't want to overfill it um so like I said, just sitting here waiting at the light or whatever it is, so far so good. At the beginning, it wouldn't go out of first gear and it would only go to like maybe 40, 45 was my top. And it's kind of revving really high at that time when I had the problem uh, with the um, engine code P1757. So I did not change any of my solenoids. Um, I used the same ones that were there. Um, 
it was just repairing that circuit or whatever. So uh, once I did that, everything seems to be fine. It's shifting the way that it should. Um, I've taken it all the way to about uh, 75, 80. And it's just shifting the gears like it should. So that, uh, that seemed to be the, the working thing. So, uh, like I said, if anybody else with this problem, um, with the P1757, more than likely that's going to be your culprit. It's going to be that it's going to need that circuit repaired. At the beginning, it didn't look like it, but I had to kind of lift it to, to make sure, and sure enough, it was broken. So, just a bad design when it came to that circuit and being so so thin. Maybe if they did it a little bit thicker, it wouldn't be an issue, but this is a common problem. Um, but I just saved myself uh, maybe 1500 to 2000 if not more, depending on what shop would do it and how far they would go in terms of either A, trying to fix the situation or problem, or just trying to give me a whole new or used transmission or replacing the uh, TCM, the transmission control module. And all those options are really expensive because one, you have to pay the labor. And then of course, getting the parts, they're gonna charge you for the parts way over than what they bought it for or where I'm gonna get it unless it was brand new and I can't source the transmission brand new, but it would probably cost me a pretty penny. And uh, in all honesty, just because my semi-mechanical skills that I do have, I'm pretty good with, the, with some tools. Um, I was able to do this and uh, it only cost me the, co the, the cost of a solder and some, some uh, solder wire. So it only ran me like 10 bucks. I fixed this whole problem with time and $10. So where I was only able to go uh, 40 or so, now I cleared the clothes. There's no more check engine light. Now I can cruise it. I took it to 80. And, um, and it's shifting just fine. So I'm um, just taking it a little easy. I wanna make sure everything is perfect before I get on it really good. But so far it's went to about 80 or whatever. But uh, like I said, that's it. I just wanted to kind of do a updated video after I did the repair, uh, got the, um, the valve body back in, got it all plugged up, made sure everything was, was bolted down correctly and torqued down and then got the pan back on it and that was it so uh that is it I said i wanted to confirm that it was a success for me and i hope for anybody else with this problem um that it works out for you as well um don't let it be the only option to go purchase brand new uh transmission control module or a whole new transmission unless you just really have the money to burn um this is an easy fix i can totally see shops just fixing this problem just like i did and then charging you a whop of money. Uh, there's some labor involved, but it doesn't require dropping the transmission. You're just dropping the pan and the valve body is in there. There's a certain uh, set of screws and bolts that you have to unbolt to get the valve body out, but there does not need to be, as far as the transmission, removing from the actual vehicle. The transmission stays in place. It's just the valve body inside that you have to remove. So uh, that is it. I want to... I won't keep you guys any longer as this was just an update. I didn't know if I was gonna make a second video or uh, or just kind of add to this one. Um, but that is it. Um, and I wish you guys the best. And again, this is for, um, my best guess is the 2003 to 2008 Infiniti FX35 rear wheel drive. I'm not sure if the all wheel drive is the same as far as how it's done. But I do know that it's uh, the same as the G35 automatics as well, I believe, from 2003 to 2007, if I'm correct. Don't quote me on that for the G35, but I do know they are very similar. Um, as I pull the picture to remove my bolts um, for the valve, uh, valve body, they're all the same. So I believe they are both the same. Um, but that is it. If you have any questions or concerns, anything that you can suggest or anything that I can possibly help you out with, uh, please don't hesitate in asking me or letting me know. I'll do my best. Um, I'm not a full-on mechanic, so uh, anybody I think can do this job if they have a, some basic tools. I think it was like a 10 millimeter and some Allen keys 
about um, a couple of different Allen key sizes that you ended up needing to do the whole job. Uh, flat head screwdriver and then obviously the solder if this is your problem. So it's not nothing too difficult. Uh, another set of hands might help help you, but I was able to do this by myself. A little stressful being under the car, getting fatigued, holding the valve body up, trying to bolt it back up, but taking it down wasn't an issue or whatever it is. So I'll let you guys go at this point. Like I said, you have any, any questions in regards to this, this is my automatic transmission on my 2008 Infiniti FX35 rear wheel drive. And I was fixing the engine code P1757 um, that called for a uh, brake solenoid, uh, front brake solenoid that's on that's on my uh, valve body in the transmission. Until next guy, next time, guys. Peace out.